Hi, this is Ben Lee, and you're watching the AU Review. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Welcome back to Toronto. You're here for Canadian Music Week, which, you know, isn't quite the clusterfuck of something like South by Southwest, but certainly lends itself to a certain level of it. It's definitely got its, you know, it's, it's doing its best. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, you played a show last night. How did it How did it go? It was fun. I played with Willie Mason and Evan Dando, who are two artists that I've played with and known over the years for a long time. So that was really fun. And tonight I'm doing um, my own show, uh, at the garrison and it's good i mean i'm it's interesting you know i'm like now 20 almost 23 years into my career so i have a a different perspective um on playing shows and i i, I find myself able to be much more present and just accept them for what they are mm. and do my best and share my music and have less uh, expectations associated with them usually you have a few notches on your belt, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, it's like you just sort of, you know, you, you've had enough fantasies crushed mm. that you know not to build fantasies around things. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about what's about to happen. It's going to be a big few months for you. New record on the way. Um, tell us a little bit about when the process for this one, this one started. Yeah. Well, when I started writing the new album, I actually thought it was going to be an even more abstract niche kind of record than the last <laughs> one, the ayahuasca one. Um, so you, you and, really uh, went into it kind of not with, without, a, without kind of an expectation to go end up back. Oh, back yeah. Truly an a few songs came and I was like, these are pop songs. <laughs> these are like single type songs. And um, so that caught me off guard. Mm. And um, I've always been a big believer in adjusting your course mm. along the way. You know, um, there's no no concept that should get in the way of what's actually unfolding. Mm. And so I adjusted my course and I ended up realizing that from my unconscious, there was sort of an invitation to re-explore my relationship to pop music and mm. that I wasn't quite, you know, I had some unfinished business in a sense and I thought there was still... And also I think that... Um, the concept and what I was writing about was sort of quite radical in the sense mm. that there are a lot about death and letting go and uh, psychological rebellion, you know. So um, in a way, it was quite beautiful to contextualize that within very accessible, uh, digestible melodies mm. and structures. I, I think every time we've spoken, it, it always seems to come back to that idea where it it you have you have an idea and you see where that takes you it's not so much about let's let's let my initial idea dictate everything that's going to happen let's let the music speak for itself yeah well i think ultimately when i truly look at why am i still making records why mm. am i still touring why am i here talking to you mm. it's because the music industry is my chosen psychological gymnasium mm. it's the place <laughs> i go to learn mm. and the very nature of learning is in not knowing. So if I went in knowing exactly what was going to happen, there's really nothing to discover. So all of mm. these processes are ones in which I'm attempting to un uncover something unknown. <laughs> 